Hello, everyone. Welcome to our online weekend worship experience. It is our desire that we would impact you to impact the world. So stick around for some next steps and some thoughts that will help you change your everyday life. When you think about the goodness of God, you can't be on your seat when you think about how good God has been to you and how great he is. It's wonderful. Turn to your neighbor and say, God is great. Turn to your second choice and say, God is greater. There's no sickness that is greater than him. Nothing is greater than him. There is no God beside him and no one can stand against him. He is king all by himself and he's God all by himself. Amen. God is faithful. If you know God is faithful, put your, just put your hands together and celebrate him. Woo. Wonderful. You're welcome, you're welcome to i5 today. Thank you for taking our time to come and just fellowship with us today. My name is Victor, I'm one of the pastors here. But most importantly, I want us to celebrate and get into the habit of celebrating um, our spiritual leaders because it's their obedience that gives us the opportunity to gather. So we're going to put our hands together and we're going to celebrate Pastors Jimmy and Irene like never before. I'm going to give you time to do it properly. Celebrate them in minutes. You must understand, they stay up at night because God burdens them with what bothers you. God places on their heart. Sometimes you go through stuff and you don't understand how uncomfortable they feel because they have to pray for you, because they have to carry you, because they have to download God's next for you and then transmit it to you. So let's get into the habit. Pray for them every day of the week. No matter how long or how short, pray for them. Say, God, just help my pastors. Give them favor, give them grace, give them strength. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. Awesome. Just before I continue, if you're between the ages of 18 and 35, lift up your hands. If you're between ages and 35, if you're not in this age bracket, stop trying to be cool. <laughs> your days are gone. It's okay. You can drop it now. Drop the skinny jean. Just drop it all together. Drop it. It's okay. Go back to straight cut. Straight. <laughs> But every Friday, every last Friday of the month, we have a hangout. I invite, we had over 90 um, young adults the last time, and I invite you out to just go to i5cd slash ya or i5ya.eventbrite to sign up. That way it helps us plan for the food and for all of that. I want to see you. It's going to be wonderful. Um, we played some games, and I crushed some spirits, and I felt good about myself. <laughs> so it's going to be wonderful also to hear the word of God and grow together. Amen. Amen. Are you ready for the word of God today? Yes. You sure? Yes. The expectation is the environment. Is the environment for miracles. If you don't expect God to speak, he is not going to speak. Um, we're going to have a, len a very lengthy um, Bible reading today, but just follow me. If you have your phones, pull it up. Um, there's going to be a big Bible on the screen. You can follow that. But you need to have your own Bible in case something happens and you can't see the words or something. But I'm going to talk about something today, talk about a story of a man and draw lessons from him. Genesis chapter 6, verse 9, it starts this way. This is the account of Noah and his family. Noah was a righteous man, the only blameless person living on earth at the time, and he walked in close fellowship with God. Noah was the father of three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Now, God saw that, saw that the earth had become corrupt and was filled with violence. God observed all this corruption in the world, for everyone on, everyone on earth was corrupt. So God said to Noah, I have decided to destroy all living things, for they have filled the earth with violence. Yes, I will wipe them all out along with the earth. Build an ark, build a large boat. From cypress wood or gospel wood, some translations will say, want to prove it with tar inside and out. Then construct decks and stalls throughout its interior. Make the boat 450 feet long, 75 feet wide, and 45 feet high. Leave an 18 inch opening below the roof all the way around the boat. Put the door on the side and build three decks inside the boat lower, middle, and upper. Look! I am about to cover the earth with a flood that will destroy every living thing that breathes. Everything on earth will die, but I will confirm my covenant with you. No matter what is going on around you, 
No matter what people are saying about the jobs and they're laying out and they're closing down the, the departments, left, right, and center, understand that even though there is a flood, God has a covenant with you. Yes. So, enter the boat. That means you must build the boat. You and your wife and your sons and your wives, bring a pair of every kind of animal, a male and a female, into the boat with you to keep them alive during the flood. Pairs of every kind of bear, bird and every kind of animal and every kind of small animal that scurries along the ground will come to you to be kept alive. And be sure to take on board enough food for your family and for all the animals. You could preach that for days. Verse 2, or verse 22. Let's read verse 22 all together. So... Read it one more time. So, Hebrews 11 verse 7 says, By faith, Noah built a ship in the middle of dry land. He was warned about something he could not see. And he acted on what he was told. The result, his family was saved. Philippians 1.6 there has never been the slightest doubt in my mind that the God who started this great work in you will keep at it and bring it to a flourishing end. Yes. Turn to your neighbor and say, God finishes what he starts. When I was growing up, the, the first scripture I learned was Philippians chapter 4 verse 13. It says, I can do all things through Christ. Who strengthens me? The Amplified says, I can do all things which he has called me to do through Christ, who strengthens and empowers me to fulfill his purpose, his assignment. I am self sufficient in Christ's sufficiency. I am ready for anything and equal to anything. Two different dimensions ready for anything and equal to anything through him who infuses me with inner strength and confident peace. How many of us want confident peace today? Awesome. Let's just pray. Father, thank you, O God, for the entrance of your word it gives light and it gives life. It gives light and banishes darkness. And it gives life, O God, and banishes death. I ask that as your word comes, it activates us in ways we did not understand. Touch hearts today. Meet people at their specific need today in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Receivers a chance to go up and go get it. Wilson takes a snap. Green man run. Looking, scrambling. Now he's going to roll. Now he's going to stop and set. Back at the 40, left the final end zone. Going to give his guys a chance. Going up, coming down. Does he come down with it? Does Bowen Jane have it? He's in the end zone. He has. Down, 12 seconds to go in the game. Niners lead by four. Far back to pass. Comes to the left. Eight seconds left. He gets away from the pressure. Fires to the end zone. Throw it. But I did, did the receivers get far enough down the field? Rodgers in trouble. It's going to get there. He turned 32 yesterday. Does he have a vintage moment in? In the end zone, it is caught for the win. Got two seconds to play. And here we go. Reset Starks. They are going to bring pressure again. Rodgers is going to roll away. Throws it up in the air. Says a prayer. And Janice does it. Stop! Denver rushes three. Flacco steps up. Throws deep. Far sideline to Kobe Jones. How did the 20? How did Kobe Jones? Touchdown! Ravens! And the miracle is answered! I told you don't give up! I told you it wasn't over! <laughs> that comes down and lost his mind. <laughs> How many of us have ever experienced anything extraordinary? Like you saw it with your two eyes and you're trying to portray it or tell your friends. You're like, the guy jumped and then he caught the point. They're looking at you like, 
Yeah, I don't think all of that happened. You're embellishing. No, I'm serious. Like he jumped and then he. No, like seriously, man. I know he jumped. Yeah, he jumped. But it's, sometimes it's hard. No, you should have been there. That's the point. <laughs> sometimes crazy things happen and it's so hard to translate them to now. Sometimes, and that's the, the danger of the Bible, is that you could read the Bible and relegate the stories in the Bible to fictional tales and stuff that did not really happen. And uh, like poetic license, and there was a lot of creative embellishments. But that stuff happened. Everything in the Bible happened. I believe that the Bible is not a story just to be read. It's a story to be lived. It's stories of people that God is saying, this is an example of what I want to do in your life. Yes, These are just examples. So over the next two weeks, I think we're going to go through a series, non-fiction, where we're going to extrapolate lessons from the lives of people, extraordinary things that happen and we believe that those extraordinary things that happen in their lives can happen in your own life so I want you to brace yourself because God can do extraordinary things in and through you if you believe that say amen, amen. you have to believe that now speaking about extraordinary what would you do if God just approached you one day one day I said build me a boat bigger than any boat you've ever built Build me a boat like one and a half the size of a normal football field, four stories high, and I'm going to send you a flood. Water enough to hold that boat. You've never seen a flood before. You don't know what an ark is. You don't, there is nothing you don't know. And God just says, do this for me. There is no point of reference, but I want you to do this for me. Now, it can sound outlandish, but that's what happened to Noah. Noah is going about his normal day. Wakes up in the morning, he's reading the news. The news then was in stone. No, the chisel of the news is stone. I was reading the news and scrolling, picking up stone after stone. And then God says, hey, hey, come, let me tell you something. God goes, um, I want to destroy the earth. The wickedness is too much. I'm done. I'm done with these guys. I'm done. I'm tired of this. Um, so I want to destroy the earth. And then Noah is like, um, you know how awkward this is, right? Like, I'm on the earth. You want to destroy the earth. I hope you have a plan for me. And God says, yes, I do. I have a plan. I have a plan. Um, but there's the thing. You have to build me an ark so that I can save you. Uh, and then, and then, and then. No, okay, understand. If I was Noah, I like to put myself in the story. If I was Noah, there are two ways I would have responded. Way number one. Noah's great-grandfather was Enoch. When God wanted to escape Enoch, what did he do? He escaped him. That's drew him. The Bible says Enoch walked with God, and people woke up the next morning looking for him. Enoch had gone. Now, I would have told God, you've done that before. Let's just do the whole thing again, you know, my great-grandfather. It's really easy. We don't have to build anything. This stuff take all the long time. Let's just cut to the chase. Take me away. Take my family. If you can take us, you can bring us back. When you're done with the whole floor thing you want to do, you bring us back. <laughs> this stuff is easy. I can believe for that. It makes sense. It's happened before. There's a frame of reference. I'm making you even with God. I don't want you to work so hard. Let's just cut the work. Let's all just cut our work. Second way I'm going to respond is what, what, what is an ark? What is a flood? What, is, what are you talking about? Seriously, what are you talking about? Understand, it's easy to minimize this. Because there was no Home Depot, there was no Lowe's, there was no YouTube to watch videos of other people who have built their ark. There was no DIY classes in Home Depot or Lowe's. There was no AutoCAD for 3D renderings of the ark. There was no trial and error. So see if this arc works and then maybe scrap it and adjust this and see maybe the fourth arc is one. There was nothing. No, nobody had built an arc before. There was no mentor. Who has done this before? And I can sit at their feet and learn from them. Nobody had done this before. You're asking me to believe you for something that nobody has ever believed you for. Then yeah, what is a flood? Come on. Seriously, what are we talking about here? What's a flood? Do you know how much water you need to float what you're talking about, God? Do, do, do you know how much? And Noah is living 100 miles away from any water body. And God tells him, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 7, and Noah built a water vessel on dry, it doesn't just say on land, on dry land. It doesn't make sense. Nothing about that command makes, there's no specifications. High, length, breadth, 
Yeah, go on. How? Use gopher wood from gopher tree. How? That day, I believe Noah signed up to be crazy. That's what he signed up for. He signed up for crazy. In one instant, he went from normal to outcast. If he was going to follow this, he went from family to fool. In one, in one instant, here's the, here's the way it goes. God, this is crazy. People are going to think I'm crazy. I am crazy. <laughs> That's how it goes. This is crazy. People are going to say I'm crazy. Maybe I am crazy. <laughs> Talk to your neighbor and say, I know I'm crazy. I know. But I have a dream. No, 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 no. Maybe some of you are not yet crazy. At the end of this, you want to be crazy at the end of this. So talk to the other neighbor and tell them, I know I'm crazy, I know I'm crazy. but I have a dream. I have a dream. God gives you this extraordinary dream, extraordinary instruction against all odds. Apply for that job. You are not qualified for it. You don't have the certifications for it. Apply for that job. Apply for that loan. Your credit score is closer to 100 than it is to where it's supposed to be. But apply for the loan. It does not make any sense. Ask her to marry you. <laughs> what do you do when you have a crazy dream? The first thing you need to do is get faith for crazy. Because don't, don't get paper to pen yet. It's not going to make sense. Get, get faith. Faith is the currency for crazy dreams. Crazy faith requires crazy, crazy assignments require crazy faith. To do what God is calling you to do, to do what has never been done before, you have to believe God like you've never believed him before. What God was asking Noah to do was to do something senseless. Records show he built the ark between 50 to 70 years of building one vessel. 50 to 70 years of being looked at as being foolish, as being crazy. That's what he was signing up for. When he signed on the dotted lines, he signed up to be crazy. He signed up to live by faith. The Bible says in Romans chapter 1 verse 17, that for in this is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. As it, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. That means if you are not actively believing God for something at any point in your life, you are not actually living. Yes, sir. Now, there came a point in my life when I realized I wasn't believing God for anything. Like, I would, I would want to pray and there was nothing serious that was stretching my faith in new ways. And that explained why I wasn't seeing God in new dimensions. But because stretches, when you stretch your faith to believe God in new ways, you experience God in new ways. You will never know Jehovah El Shaddai, the all-sufficient one, if you have not stretched your faith to believe that God is your all-sufficiency. You will never understand dimensions of God until you stretch your faith to believe God in those dimensions. Crazy faith is the fuel that runs, that drives crazy dreams. It forms our crazy dreams. The moment your faith stops stretching, your dreams begin to shrivel up and die. The moment you're not stretching to reach for what God has for you, the moment it becomes comfortable, in orthopedics, we have this thing, position of comfort. When you break your hand, that's the wrong time to be comfortable. When you break your leg, that's the wrong time to be comfortable. Because position of comfort is a position of disfigurement. Because if you're trying to be comfortable when you should be uncomfortable, and if you're trying to be, to be normal when you should be stretched, you lose out on what God, what God has for you is just beyond your reach. You have to stretch for it. The just shall live by faith. So here are some things about faith. I was thinking about faith the other time, and I, and I stumbled on something. How does faith work? Number one, faith comes by hearing. Romans chapter 10, verse 17 says this. So faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. That means as God speaks to me, as I hear his words, as I hear his instruction, as that divine idea drops in my heart, it begins to do something. But first of all, I have to hear it. Faith doesn't begin with your eyes. Some of us want to see it to believe it. All you need to do to believe it is hear it. 
Faith starts with your ears. Yes. It doesn't start with your eyes. You don't have to see it. The Bible says that in Romans chapter 6, 11 verse 7, oh, sorry, Hebrews 11 verse 7, it says this. By faith, Noah built a ship in the middle of dry land. He was warned about something he couldn't see and acted on what he was told. He was warned about something. God is saying things, you can't really see them, but you can hear what he's saying. Yes. So faith starts with your ears, and then it goes to your heart. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 7 says this, So we walk by faith and not by sight, living our lives in a manner consistent with confident belief in God's promises. Confident belief. The New Living Translation says this, For we live by believing. You live by believing. The moment you stop believing, you start dying. So faith starts with your ears. Then it affects your heart and your mind. And then it goes to your eyes. You will not be able to see it until you're able to hear it. You will not be able to see it until God works on your heart. So God will be telling you, go, write that book. And you say, I'm not a writer. No, you heard, write the book. Start with what you heard. You need to change your mind. I know right now I don't feel like a writer, but God begins to work on your heart and your mind to believe those things that are not as if they are. God begins to transform your mind to think differently, to be able to hold what you're hearing because then you can see what God sees. See what God saw when he told you you can write that book. See what God saw when he told you you can start that business. See what God saw when he told you you can make that move. There's something he saw, but you cannot see it with the eyes you have now because you have to hear first, you have to believe second, and then you can see. That's the progression of faith. That's how faith works. Nothing is almost more exemplary of faith than the Hail Mary. First time I watched the football game, and I saw somebody throw the Hail Mary, I was like, what are you doing? Like, seriously, can't you see what is happening up there? Do you know the amount of faith it takes to release a ball into an air? First of all, you have to ward off everybody coming against you because everybody is coming against you. The enemy, the opponent has divided themselves. Half of them are coming for you because you have the ball. The other half is going for the people you hope are going to catch the ball. And you first of all have to do part A, avoid the people that are coming for you, wait long enough for your guys to reach where you want them to go. And it would have been easy if all you were doing was wait for them to get there. It would have been easy. I will fight with my life if all I had to do was hold the ball long enough for my guys to get in position. But I wait long enough and I look up and I see a mesh of adult males who are hunting down the ball. Some of them are for me, some of them are against me. And the, the definition of a Hail Mary is this. It says this, a very long pass forward in American football made in desperation with a small chance of success. How do you know the hands that are going to bring that ball from the air are going to be the hands of your teammates? You don't know, but do you know the kind of belief you have to have? You hear the call. Go for it. And like, go for it. They are taller than us. They are bigger than us. They've caught all the balls before. Go for it. You know the amount of belief. Something in you has been transformed. That QB's mind has been transformed to believe, even though it doesn't look like it. When I release this, I have every confidence that the hands that are supposed to catch it will catch it. The just shall leave. By faith. It's not your responsibility to catch the ball. God is waiting for you to throw it. Yeah. Throw it. Go for it. Come on. Go for it. Come on. Will you believe enough to let it go? Yeah. Will you believe enough when you know no? They are firing everybody. They have fired five out of six and you're number six. And they call you into the office. What's your mind telling you then? Some of us are thinking, and there goes my job. So the crazy ones amongst us are thinking, I'm about to get a raise. The money just freed up. <laughs> Sounds crazy. The just shall live by faith. Our work is a work of faith. Number two, get comfortable with crazy. Get comfortable 
Just shake on your seat. Just shake and relax. Wherever you are, just shake. S sit well. Get, get used to crazy. Get comfortable with crazy. Crazy is the word we used to define when people do what we call stupid stuff. We don't understand it and they just do it and we say they're crazy. For those who live without faith, when people walk in faith, they think <laughs> you're being crazy. It has a negative connotation in our society, but sometimes you want to be crazy. I don't believe anybody. Nobody gets into the Hall of Fame by living ordinary lives and predictable lives. N nobody plays ordinary and predictable and gets into the Hall of Fame. No, nobody makes predictable and ordinary music and makes it into the musical. No, predictable and ordinary is the recipe for mediocrity. If you want to die the way you were born, don't be crazy. Don't go for it. So I began to ask myself, why are we uncomfortable sometimes? Why do we have doubts and double-mindedness and don't believe the crazy things that God is telling us? The first reason why is something, I, is something I, I, I've come to understand. We, we, we think about what people will think. What will people think? The posture here is people pleasing. People will think I'm crazy. People will think I've lost my mind. People will think... People will come to advise me because they think I've lost my way in the will of God. People are going to think I'm no more um, relating with God. I no more have my quiet time because I'm doing something that doesn't make any... People are going to call the doctor on me. Most of us would have called the doctor on Noah because what he was saying made no sense. Most of us have lost what God said to us because of what other people have said. People have called you crazy and you have abandoned crazy. People have called you names that has extinguished the dream of God because you let them... You let what they call you come into you. And it begins to fight what God told you. What they tell you and what God told you, they begin to fight on your inside. And the one you feed is the one that wins. Yeah. If you listen to what they're saying, what they're saying is going to win. I looked at the ark, fell asleep, and the ark had no windows. No windows. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 7, that when they finished building the ark, they stayed in the ark for one week before the first drop of rain fell. One week. Think of if they had windows. And by day three, they're like, um, if I'm Noah's son, Dad, um, just putting it out there, I know you've noticed it. Um, it's not raining yet. I know you say God told you about rain. But I'm looking at them, they are laughing at us because this is day three. I kept quiet, I tried my best, but um, are you sure that's what God told you? Are you sure God told you flood? Are you sure he did not say, um, maybe just build and use a new house? Are you sure God wasn't saying house and you were thinking boats? <laughs> and people begin to translate it and you begin to fall prey because you have a window in your boat. A window for other people's perspectives to filter into you. A window for other people's opinions to filter into you. Day four, and you're like, um, this is the fourth day. There are no clouds. It doesn't look like it's going to rain. Day five, um, day six, um, the morning of day seven, um, I think at this point we need to leave the ark. We are really need to look stupid. But the ark had no windows because God was saying, this ride is not about the view. This ride is not what about you're going to see. I want to do something on your inside, and I want to protect you from what other people are going to say. They're going to call you crazy. I know you're crazy, but the way they're going to call you crazy might discourage you. So do not put any windows on the ark. Forget about what they are saying. Yes. Concentrate on your assignment. Yes, yes sir. Stop seeking people's opinions. Yes, sir. Stop it. Come on. Yeah, there are people who need to seek their opinions. Go to your spiritual leader. Yeah, 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 yeah. But stop if, they, if, not, if that person has never built an ark. Don't discuss your ark with them. Yeah. I will only discuss my ark if you have an ark. If you don't have an ark, I'm sorry. Um, I can't discuss an ark with somebody who has built a paper boat. <laughs> you have no frame of reference for what God is telling me. That's why you have to have a spiritual leader in your life. Someone who has gone ahead of you and understands that they might not understand everything God is saying, but they understand the voice of God. No windows. Forget what they're saying. Don't let people talk you out of what God is saying. The second thing that makes us uncomfortable is what we think. 
The posture here is logic and skepticism and reason. And the language is, I don't see how that's possible. Some of us outsmart God. God says move, and you say move to where? It doesn't make any sense. There is no money. There are no resources. I don't know how to do it. I have never done it before. Nobody in my family has done it. Nobody in my workplace has done it. I am not qualified for that promotion. I'm not qualified for the loan. I have never done And we begin to ask God, how is this going to happen? Noah was given instructions, and he was not given the way it was going to work. Build an ark. Get the animals. How am I supposed to get animals two by two? How is the lion supposed to coexist with the zebra and the lion doesn't eat the zebra? Are you, are you out of your mind? <laughs> think about it, God. Think about it. Really think about this stuff. <laughs> it doesn't make sense. Oh. And we think and we outsmart God. And God is looking at us like... <laughs> Some of us are so brilliant that we become really foolish. Are so intelligent that we become fools. And God says, I need you to go for that competition when it doesn't make any sense. Apply for it. Go, go for it. Everybody's going to say, don't do it, but just do it. Because I said so. One more thing the ark did not have. Poof! It's a staring. Noah did not decide where the ark was going to go. There was no navigation system. It was just a container. Now, it's easy to think. We say, Jesus, take the whales. God was telling Noah, don't even install the whales. Don't install it. You don't know where we're going to go. You don't, you don't have no direction, no GPS, no Google Maps, nothing. Forget it. Sit in the boat and relax. I will take you to where I want to take you. Most of what God tells you, go somewhere and stay in Starbucks between 9 and 11. Why? How? They think it's awkward. They think I'm this. Go and sit down there between 9 and 11. You don't need to know how it's going to happen. Just obey what I say. Start that business. You don't need a business plan. You didn't need a business plan. But you do, it doesn't have to make sense. The numbers will not add up because God is infinite. To, okay, I'll say again. The numbers will not add up because God, the God number is infinite. You don't know how he's going to show up for you. So you cannot walk him into an equation. You cannot put God on a timeline because he's the beginning of time, the end of time. He lives outside of time, but operates inside. You cannot time him. You don't know when it's going to happen. Come on, God. Don't be a smart God. Give me the whales. Jesus take the whales. No. God, see, business secret. Build your boat without the whales, without a steering wheels. Let God navigate you. Yes. Let me tell you what. Some of us think that because God is navigating, it's going to be a rosy ride. No. There are going to be bumps on the road. Yes, sir. There are going to be times when it's going to be so turbulent, you wish you were not in the boat. Yes, but you must understand what is happening outside the boat. People are drowning and dying, and you're in the boat. So all that God guarantees is safety, direction, and security. Yes, sir. You might lose something along the way, but you get everything you need. Yes, sir. You may lose some relationships along the way, but you get everything you need for where God is taking you to. Yes, sir. God says, don't have a steering wheel because there are some things I need you to plow through that you're going to want to avoid. There are some potholes I want you to get into, and you're going to want to not engage them. There are some things I need you to not be afraid of. You're going to run away. I need you to have faith to move forward, even when it does not make any sense. So, I will give you no wheels. I will decide what your training program, I'm going to decide that. I'm going to decide what you get in, what you get out of. I'm going to decide what way you go. Don't try to outsmart God. Now, this life doesn't make any sense. That's why the first thing you must get is get faith. Because then you have to believe that he who has begun this work in you is able to bring it to a flourishing finish. <laughs> he who steers the boat is responsible for safety and direction. If your faith is only increased because you know the details of the journey, I don't think you have faith. 
if you get inspired and more courageous because you know how it's going to happen, you didn't have faith in the first place. Because faith is a substance, the evidence, the substance of things that has no substance. It doesn't make any sense. Get comfortable. You don't know how to do it, but that's okay. You're not qualified, but that's okay. I've never, that's okay. I don't have, that's okay. Never be, that's okay. There is no one, that's okay. That, no, that's okay. That's okay. That's okay. Learn how to tell yourself, that's okay. I wake up in the morning, it doesn't look like a good morning, but that's okay. Yes, sir. There's no money to buy this stuff, but I have to go to the market, but that's okay. Yes, sir. I don't know how to write a book, but I have to write it. The laptop is open in front of me, a blank page, but that's okay. Just begin to type. Come on. That's okay. Be okay. Be comfortable with crazy. That's right. Doesn't make any sense. Doesn't make any sense. Number four, number three, get clear about crazy. I remember in medical school, I had to write this exam. Or oh, no, first of all, I, medical school, let me be frank, let me be frank. When I began to pastor in medical school, I began to wake, wake up more for church than for school. And that meant I began to skip classes. I'm not saying you should do this. <laughs> oh, for those of you who are kids, you have to go to class, please go to class. But I started skipping class. One of the classes I cut all together was psychiatry. It didn't make sense. I was like, I'm not going to be a psychiatrist. Doctor, I'm good. I'm fine. I'm not going to do it. Blah, blah, blah. So for six months, I didn't go to class. I was doing church. Church was growing. And then one day, the professor announced we're going to have a test the next day about everything we have learned in six months. And then I freaked out. <laughs> then I prayed to God. I said, God, <laughs> help. <laughs> Because if I failed that class, that was it. So I was like, Jesus, help, help me. So I, I felt this leading in my heart to watch this movie about an autistic child. Now understand, I have 400 or so people in my class. Everybody's reading everywhere, everywhere. Everybody was reading, head bent into a book. I was the only one in front of a screen watching a movie. <laughs> you have to be clear about your crazy. You have to be clear. You have to be clear about what God is asking you to do. What exactly? The Bible says, no, I did everything exactly. What exactly is God asking you to do? So everybody is reading and everybody is studying. People are making notes. People are working. If, you, you, you need to be in medical school when we're writing exams. It's like a, it's like a psychiatric ward. You're like, psych ward. We're all crazy. People, it's, it's messed up. And I'm there in front of the TV. And I watch it. And God says, watch it again. Second time. Third time. Fourth time. Almost seven times, seven times, I watched that movie, and then my, my faith got to the limit, it got to, and I brought out my book. I let, let, let me pretend. I know God said watch the movie, but my faith had, it wasn't that big. So I said, God, help me, please. So I just read. We go to the class the next day, and I was quiet. So I was very quiet, humble, because I know it's about to go down. <laughs> And my faith then was like on a hundred. Jesus, if you do this for me, I promise. <laughs> That's why I was singing songs in your native language. Like in Hebrew, I was singing worship. Like the whole morning, I was worshiping God. If you show up today, I promise. <laughs> I will go to class, every class. <laughs> it's so stupid, man. It's so crazy. <laughs> Somebody sit down. I'm going somewhere with this. <laughs> we sit down. I remember the context was everything you've learned in six months. So they give out this paper, and we're expecting a booklet, a whole booklet. It gives out this really small, thin piece of paper, face down on all the desks. <clears throat> There's already panic and mumbling in the room. Oh, what's going on? What's going on? They said everything. I was ready. People that were I'd really read. You know, medical school people want to show off. <clears throat> so I sat down. They had my little help me in my spirit. <laughs> then I turned the paper when they say start. And I'm going to say the words of the question that they asked. The one question. This was my, my test. Write all you know about autism. Wow. I'm not making this up. Write all you know. I looked at God and said, God, <laughs> you are great. <laughs> but the only way I could look at God and smile was because I was clear yeah. on what my crazy was. Yeah. 
Most of us are actually really crazy, like negative crazy, because you have made up and filled up the blanks in what God told you. You have to ensure that you're clear about what you're supposed to do. The Bible says, build an ark, get the animals, get in there with your wife, with your sons, and they, that, do what God asked you to do exactly the way he asked you to do it. Be clear. And the only way you can be clear, the Bible says, no walked with God. The depth of your relationship with God determines the clarity of your hearing his voice. If you have a shallow relationship with God, your hearing will be fuzzy, your seeing will be foggy. You have to make sure you have a close enough relationship that even when God whispers, you can hear. Because sometimes it's going to be a still, small voice. Do it. Write it. Apply for it. Go for it. Ask for it. Take it. Let it go. Whispers that you have to be close enough to hear. Have faith for your crazy. Get comfortable with your crazy. Get clear about your crazy. Get consumed by your crazy. I noticed in the text that the Bible says Noah was the only righteous man when all of the world was corrupt and wicked. Now that means every day Noah woke up he woke up as a crazy person because he was doing things nobody was doing. The things other people could touch, he could not touch. The things other people could freely engage in, he could not engage in. So everybody already thought he was crazy. Everybody already thought he had lost his mind. We're all partying and drinking. Everybody goes out on Friday nights. Thank you. Everybody goes out on Friday nights. It doesn't make any sense. But you can't anymore. Your friends cannot understand that I cannot go out on Friday because my crazy dream has consumed me. Things other people used to do or could not do. Everybody thought he was already crazy. But on a low scale level. Now you must understand, God is not going to ask you to build an ark if you've not built paper boats every day. Every day you wake up and you're different. Every day you go to that office and everybody cheats and everybody lies and everybody scams and everybody backbites and everybody does all the negative things that they do. And you choose to live for God. And people think you are crazy. But it's the crazy people that God trusts to do crazy things. God says, Noah, I've trusted you. I've seen you live a crazy life already. Let me give you something really crazy to do. We have to be consumed to the point where we build the ark. And we also have to be consumed by the fact we are building the ark. Most of us want to live crazy dreams, but have a handle on normalcy. You want to keep the same friends you had before, keep the same habits you had before, keep the same relationships and connections and desires and appetites and spending habits that you had before but reach for a crazy dream. Normalcy will kill crazy every time if you try to mix them. Every single time. You have to be consumed. Everything in your being should live for what you are doing. The Bible says Noah was a preacher of righteousness. Second Peter. That means in the morning he walked on the ark. In the night he went to tell them, there's a flood coming. There's a flood coming. You, 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 you want to repent. There's a flood coming. And people will laugh at him. Understand the kind of spectacle he became. People actually came and sat down and watched him build for fun. You know what? Let's go have fun. Friday night, what are we going to do? No movies. No movies we like. Let's go watch Noah build the ark. He's really being stupid. Let's watch what he does now. But he had to be consumed by the fact that God had told him to do something. How many of us have let go of some things because it did not make sense? How many of us have not reached for some things because we felt my resume did not just add up? They wouldn't want someone like me I'm going to share this story with you and I'm going to make a call. I went to preach in a church in Texas, talked about generosity. 
and this man just felt the the burden to give I'm not talking about money now or giving so relax ease your pressure don't hold your bags just relax I'm not talking about money but he felt something crazy they had this amount in the account he felt something crazy tell him he leaned to his wife and tell the wife I feel we should do this the wife said if God tell, told you to do it do it I get this call from the pastor and he tells me this guy is looking for a job he goes to the company I'm going to use a level 5 job he goes for the interview and they tell him somebody has already filled this this position we have a level 2 for you if you will take it he called his wife so give me one minute he called his wife hey I came for a level 5 they're offering me a level 2 and she said, remember what the pastor said? The pastor said, obey. What is God telling you to do? He said, God is telling me to take level two. So he accepts the job. Now you're clapping now. Yeah. It makes sense. Obedience. He accepts the job, says yes, fills in the paper. His name gets into the system. This is Wednesday. Thursday morning, he gets a call. They tell him, no, he comes to work, sorry, on Monday morning sits in the desk orientation had happened and he's about to start and somebody comes to him a lady comes to him and tells him i'm your assistant and he goes um do level two people get assistance what listen what are you talking about he says um this is my new job my new desk my new role this is where i'm supposed to be the lady says did you miss the email what he did not know had happened was this company looks within before they hire without and they had a level eight job open up and what it does they have an algorithm that searches within the organization to search for people who are qualified for the job or near qualified for the job because he said yes on wednesday and the search happened on thursday his name appeared on thursday because now he was staff and all he needed to do was give him 100% to what God was asking him to do. He did not believe it. But obedience is God's soft spot. Most of us don't have the life we're supposed to have this year because we missed out on doing something crazy last year. Most of us, our marriage is not what it's supposed to be now because you missed out on that crazy instruction from last year, from last month. Most of us should have been authors. Now, how are you going to become a New York Times bestseller if you don't obey the crazy dream to write? <laughs> Let's all stand up on our feet. I believe very much that attention to me. Pay attention. This is a very critical moment in your life. I believe very much that God wants to activate dreams in this house. I'm going to run down a list. There are people here who do not believe that they are qualified for the job that God is asking you to apply for. Right here. And God has told you, you felt that little inkling. Just do it. But somehow you have silenced it. You've let logic and reason kill what God is saying. If that's you, make your way out here now. I want to pray for you. There's another group of people who you need a new home. You need a new home and your credit score does not look like what it's supposed to look like. And you're in this room and God is saying, and you know God is saying, it's time for you to move but you have not, you, you, you've, you've, you've silenced that voice because it doesn't make financial sense. Come out now. There are people in this room that God has asked you to start a business. But you have silenced it. You've written it out in your journal. But you're scared even to share it. And you're in this room. Make your way out here. There are people in this room right now that God is asking you to write a book. When I said it, it tingled your, in your spirit. There was a tickling in your spirit. And you know, you know you have something, but you don't feel like you know how to do it. That's not what's important. Knowing how to do it. Noah had never built an ark before this day. 
but he built a successful ark big enough to hold his family and the animals. Knowing how to do it is not a prerequisite to obedience. It does, it does, it's not in the equation for obedience. There are people who want to make an inf- investment financially. God is asking you to change the way you operate financially, the way you invest, the way you give, the way you spend. But it doesn't make sense because of the debt that you have, because of the bills that you have. If you're in this room, come forward. I, I, I want to pray with you. It does, God is asking you to make a move, but it doesn't make financial sense. It's not prudent. It's not what we call prudence. It's not financial prudence, but you know, you feel God is calling you to a higher dimension. God is asking you to release an album, but it does not make any sense. God is asking you to hold an event. It doesn't make any sense. If you're in this room, come out. What I'm making you come out is because as you walk out, I want you to begin to shed the doubts and the double-mindedness and begin to embrace your crazy. So my first need to get back to crazy. If you're up, up, up here, I'm trying to make sure I listen for everyone. There are people here that believe they found who they're supposed to marry. There's someone here who believes they found who they're supposed to marry, but you've lost your confidence because you don't have your finances yet in order. You don't think she or he is going to accept you. It doesn't make any sense now, but you know God is asking you to reach out and connect. If you're in this room, you can come out. Let me bring it home. There are people here, you've come to I-5, and you've heard about impact, and how that God wants to change the world through you. And God is calling you to a higher dimension of impact. You're thinking about your job. I don't have the time. I don't have the resources. I have these crazy ideas, but I, I, I don't know how to bring it. If you're, in, if you're here, you can come forward. I'm going to pray. I'm going to say a prayer for everyone. Lift up your hands if you're here. Understand what you're doing. Understand what you're doing now. Close your eyes. I need you to see yourself doing what you thought was crazy. Close your eyes and see yourself do what you thought was crazy and unacceptable and unethical and does not make any sense and abnormal and outrageous and incredible and, and it doesn't make any sense. See yourself walk in those footsteps. See yourself embrace the totality of what God has for you. This is a moment that is going to change your life forever. This moment right here, June 25th, is going to change your life forever. Forever. Father, I pray for wisdom. Lift up your hands as high as you can. Father, I pray that you activate dreams in this place. People who have abandoned their arcs because it did not make any sense, because the numbers did not add up, because they thought they were not qualified, because they thought it did not make any sense. It was foolish. It doesn't make any logical sense. Nobody is going to believe that's what God told me. They don't have to believe. For the eyes that you give them courage to obey when it makes no sense. Give them the wisdom, give them sensitivity to hear clearly what you are saying that they should do. Give them the courage to move forward when everything around, around them tells them to stay still. Give them the courage to press on when nothing points to progress. Father, I ask, O oh God, that tonight you're raising a new breed of world changers, of people who believe very strongly that God wants to use them as an example. Heroes of faith in our time. People who are daring into the unknown, uncharted territory in our time. I pray that those books are released. Those businesses have started. That promotion is yours. That job is yours. That house is yours. That connection is yours. Everything that God has stole you. The Bible says his word will not come back without establishing that which it was sent for. I ask, O oh Lord, right now, that you establish in their lives what you have promised. You are able to bring to a flourishing finish what you have promised to them. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Put your hands together and you can go back to us. I hope that you are inspired in an incredible way. 
not just inspired, but that your heart was stirred to make a decision for Jesus Christ. Here at I-5 Church, we call that a fresh start. And if you want a fresh start for your life, simply repeat this prayer after me. Say, Jesus, come into my heart. Make me new. I want a fresh start in you. In Jesus' name, amen. You see, it's that simple. Not only that, we want to connect with you in a real way. We'd love for you to visit i5city.com and click on next steps so that you can find out the next steps for your journey in God. Now we all have an opportunity to give back to God. We call that at I5 Church, living beyond ourselves. We often say that you don't give to a church, you give through a church. And there's two ways that you can give here to I5 Church. You can simply click give on your browser or you can simply text the word give to 410-567-0645. We hope to see you soon at a weekend worship experience. God bless you.